Most running vests and packs come with room for a bladder, but I personally haven't used one in years, aside from in a few very specific cases. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you why I no longer use a bladder and why I prefer to use flasks instead. And as usual, this video is going to be very Solomon product heavy because, well, I'm an ambassador, I love their products and I've been using them for years, but I will be talking about a couple other brands as well. So let's take a look at how bladder systems are designed to work in most packs, which tends to be pretty universal. So I've got here an Arcteryx Norvan 14 liter pack and a Solomon 12 liter, which is the one that I use for most of my adventures and longer races. And uh, I have here a Solomon bladder system, which is the one and a half liter. And you can see there's this separate compartment in the rear, which is separated from the main compartment. It's this mesh lining and the bladder goes back in here and the hose itself um, would be fed through the bottom and in this case kind of brought up along the side, along the front, um, and there are some, some dedicated clips here. Um, and that's the same thing on the Solomon 12 liter. If I flip this around, again there's this sort of mesh liner that um, creates a separate compartment for the bladder which separates it from the main pocket up front. And again here the hose is going to be fed through and then brought along through this pocket here and clipped um, to the pack here so that the hose comes up to your, to your face. Now Solomon's packs come with this special insulating sleeve designed especially for the one and a half liter bladders, uh, but the bladders themselves are sold separately, which tends to be the case with most running vests and packs. Um, I should point out though that there are some larger bladders like this one here, which is an older three liter bladder that I used to use for hiking, uh, but this of course is gonna be much too big for most running vests. Okay, now there's a few design problems with bladders in my experience that make them just a pain to use. And the first most obvious problem is that, in most cases at least, you're gonna have to pull the bladder out to refill it. That might mean completely pulling the hose out, taking the entire bladder out, taking this top part off, filling it up from a tap or a creek or at an aid station, and then re-fitting uh, the hose and feeding it all the way through and, and basically doing it all over again. And that, that's fairly easy to do when your pack is empty, but as soon as this main compartment is completely filled up with stuff, it can actually be quite difficult to get a full bladder in here. You know, you can try to sort of hold your pack open and, and the bladder open under a tap, but not only are you gonna likely get water all over your pack, but again, it's gonna be very difficult to get this bladder to full capacity um, while still inside your pack when your pack is already quite full. And of course, the alternative is that you could empty your pack um, and then fill up your bladder while it's still in your pack and then put everything back in, but I'm not sure that that's any better. Bladders are particularly hard to get filled up at aid stations. Now there are usually volunteers who are more than willing to help fill up your flasks or your bladders. Um, and of course, you know, you're either gonna have to hand your entire pack over or again, pull your bladder completely out so that an aid station volunteer can help fill it up. I had a very well-meaning volunteer once during a 100 miler offer to help fill up my bladder. So I handed it to them and when they handed it back, they said, sorry, I can't quite get this closed properly. And it turned out they had threaded it incorrectly and really forced it on. And not only could they not get it closed, but they couldn't get it reopened again. So I'd spend the next three or four minutes with freezing cold hands trying to get this thing open. I finally did and closed it up. Um, but since then I sort of have uh, shied away from using bladders during races. And flasks, on the other hand, are much easier to open and close. And what I'll usually do is open it up and hand the bottle to a volunteer, but I'll hang on to the lid and then close it up myself to make sure that everything's been sealed properly before putting it back in my pack. And that leads me to my second complaint about bladders, which is that they represent a single point of failure. So if a bladder does leak, and that's fairly common down here around the O-rings uh, where the hose attaches to the bladder itself, you know, if that does leak, then you're kind of screwed. Whereas at least with a flask, it's highly unlikely that you're gonna have two flasks leaking at the same time. So while they're far from perfect, um, at least you have some redundancy there. And it's really easy to carry a spare empty flask in the back of your pack, um, or of course to have one or two of these in a drop bag during a race. And when it comes to races, a lot of people like to be able to mix it up uh, when it comes to their fluids, which isn't possible when using a single large reservoir like a bladder. So with two flasks, for example, you might be able to have one dedicated to water and then one for electrolytes or Coke or anything else that you might want to pick up along the way. And bladders are also a lot more difficult to clean, especially if you're using something other than just water. Um, and that's mostly because of the hose. These hoses are very difficult to get clean. 
And I'm sure a lot of you have had this experience where you've put something like Noon or some other kind of electrolyte powder in a bladder, and that taste is really hard to get out. Um, it can also discolor the bladder and uh, gunk up the hose and the attachment point as well. But at least with flasks, you can maybe have one or two dedicated for that purpose, uh, where you expect them to be a little discolored, to carry a taste, and potentially to be growing mold um, much more quickly than the rest of your flasks. Now, take a moment to think about whether you've ever had this experience. You get to an aid station, or maybe you finish a really long training run, and you realize that your bladder is still completely full. You've barely drank anything, um, you're probably dehydrated, or worst yet, you're maybe halfway between aid stations, um, or between water sources in the backcountry, and you take a sip, and you hear that dreaded gurgling sound as your bladder unexpectedly runs dry. Now flasks make it a lot easier to monitor your fluid intake, whether you're trying to drink more or you're trying to ration your fluids. So I might, for example, set a goal of drinking one bottle an hour during a race or maybe trying to finish both bottles before I reach the next aid station. And sure, with the bladder, you can kind of reach back and feel, you know, how much is left, but it's not quite the same. It's also possible now to buy flasks with built-in filters like the Cadadin Be Free or the new Solomon XA filter cap. And I've got a video with a detailed review of both of these that I'll link to in the description below. Now, one benefit of a bladder over a flask is that you can more easily use iodine droplets, purification tablets, or even a UV filter. This is especially important if you want to filter out viruses in addition to bacteria and protozoa, but it's going to be overkill in most cases. And you do have to remember to keep the UV filter charged, and both tablets and droplets are going to add a funny taste to your water, plus they take time, whereas a flask with a built-in filter is instant, so you can just drink on the go. Now, last but not least, carrying all of your water on your back in a bladder only serves to further load the rear of your pack, instead of taking advantage of the front flask pockets that come on most running vests. So this one and a half liters of space is essentially being deducted from the total volume of the pack, which in this case is 12 liters, and that 12 liters also includes the roughly one liter of space up front designed for the flasks. So if you're leaving those front pockets empty, you're effectively only getting 11 liters of space out of this 12 liter pack and putting all of the weight in the back instead of distributing those extra couple of pounds to the front. Now you might be thinking, well, what if I need to carry more than a liter of water at a time? And that is one case where I might still use a bladder. So by default, I'll start by carrying a liter of water up front in my flasks. And then if I know I'm gonna be hours between uh, water sources in the backcountry, I'll then maybe fill up my bladder so that I can scale up to a total of two and a half liters. But I think there's actually a better option, which is to simply carry a third and maybe a fourth flask in the back of your pack. You can then swap them out for the flasks in the front and even take the filter off and swap that as well if you're carrying unfiltered water. And the old style Solomon 12 liter pack was actually great for this because you could keep them sideways here in this bottom kangaroo pouch. And while it's definitely not necessary, getting one of these caps for your flask is a really good idea as well so that you can make sure that the flask isn't gonna leak in the back of your pack. But either way, you should be able to use that rear bladder compartment to store two flasks standing upright without issue. So for a lot of runs, that's exactly what I'll do. I'll carry two flasks up front and then one or two spare flasks just empty that I can fill up only when necessary and then keep them in the back of my pack. And when it comes to races, I'll follow a very similar strategy, especially if I have crew. I'll carry two flasks that I'm using between aid stations. And when I see my crew, I can just hand them my empty flasks and they can hand me two new ones already pre-filled. So there you have it. That's why I never use a bladder, except for in a few cases. So what do you think? Good idea? Bad idea? Tell me about it in the comments below. And if you've been following my channel for a while, consider becoming a channel member. You'll not only be supporting the channel, but you can also get access to exclusive behind the scenes content where I'm gonna go into a lot more detail about my training and preparation for races and self-supported backcountry adventures.